Hey, it's David with Beagles on Fire. Just out here trying to make a little video uh, this morning about something that I thought of. Hadn't done one of these in a little bit. As you can hear, I've got dogs in the box that are starting to do a little howling and barking. What we've got today is we've got some brand new dogs. Not everybody in the box is brand new, but uh, the bulk of them are brand new dogs that have been in the starting pen and I'm letting out in the wild for the very first time. Um, you say, well, is this the only way to train dogs? Absolutely not. There's nothing that I do that I would tell you is the only way to train a dog. Um, in a perfect world, if we had more time and didn't have other commitments, the best thing in my opinion to do would be to introduce these dogs to a shock collar in a confined area like maybe 20, 30 yards wide and 100 yards long. Size is not really the most important thing, but just get them a chance to know what the tone button is. But because of different time restraints on me and different things like that, I have to let them out. I have to be very patient and realize that I'm dealing with dogs that have never had a shock collar on them. And so um, what I thought I'd equate this to was this. You know, there's a lot of things in life that our kids go through, that we go through, and sometimes when you raise them, you've got to turn them out for the very first time, so to speak. They're gonna go out into the world. Now, the good thing about these dogs when I turn them out, um, I'm not gonna be able to control exactly the very first thing they do, because if they go take off running somewhere, they don't know what the shock or the tone button is. So I've got to be very patient with that and keep that in mind. But the one thing that I do have in the box is something that's very important, and that is two totally broke dogs, Georgia and Little Ann, that will be the right influence on these dogs. When I, when I let them go, they've got all these temptations that they can go run, trash or whatever. If they do that, Little Ann and Georgia are gonna come back and tell on them and then I know I can correct it. So they've got a great influence on them. And we need to make sure that we have a great influence on our kids as we raise them, that we're the right influence and that hopefully we can keep them around great influences and, um, and then, you know, the one thing about it is if these dogs can go out here, they can get lost. They, can, they, they don't know, they've never been here. So they can get lost and, and um, but I'm like the, the shepherd right now with the sheep. I'm, I'm gonna go make sure that I've got them back. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna get them to come. And we've talked about that in the past on some other videos. You know, are you hearing the call that's there? Do you hear when, when God calls you for something or lays something on your heart? Sometimes that's done through other people, uh, and sometimes it's just the spirit you feel within you that you feel the call to do something. And so this is just the next step in the training process. By no means are these dogs going to be ready to post and, and go out of here as um, soon as I come in today, no matter how good they do, because this is their very first time in the wild. So there's a whole different ball game. They've been in, uh, some of them been in a pen that was 47 acres, some of them been in a pen that was nine acres, some of them been in a pen that was 12 acres. Now they're turned loose on over 500 acres to run. So, you know, we teach our kids as they grow up, we kind of keep them somewhat with a boundary, but there comes a time in life where you have to let them out in the world and let them go. You know, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, we all grew up, we've departed from some things that we know we should be doing. Maybe you're in that boat today. You're like, man, I know I ought to be doing better than I am. Well, you know, don't wait till God hits the shock collar to get your attention. Just come on back to the call. When he calls you, just come on back. Um, we all make mistakes you can't change your past. We've all made mistakes. Every single person, there's nobody that's lived on this earth except one that ever lived a perfect life. So we all have a past and the devil wants to get us and drag us down with that past. It's like putting a, putting a bowling ball and, and putting it around a dog's neck and having them run with that. You know, they couldn't get very far. They'd be hurt and they couldn't run like they need to. And so we would need to go take that bowling ball off of them and free them up and get that load and burden off of them. And that's what a whole lot of times we do. We drag around our past. We got a lot of baggage. We drag it around and we need to just let it go. Let God take that off of you and just have the present and the future that you can change. No matter how you've messed up, good guy that we knew that's no longer here on this earth, 
that we knew made a, made a quote that has stuck. He said, it's never too late to do the right thing. I hope that you will do the right thing starting today if you've had some messed ups and some mistakes. And maybe, you, maybe you've messed up as a dad. I've been there, done that. Uh, maybe you need to get with your kids and, and, and tell them you're sorry and, and start, make a commitment to move forward from this day on. Don't let your past drag you down. Remember, today is a new day. It's a new start. Just like I've got a new group of dogs here, ready to go out, try something new. And yes, I may pull my hair out at different times today and I'll get some other footage, but who knows? One of these dogs may take off and just rip and roar today. But we're going to uh, see what they'll do have a good time. But look, you may be the new dog, so to speak. You may be entering into something new in your life. Find you someone that can be a mentor to you to, to look up to. But remember, there's only one we should pattern our life after. Yes, there are influences, but man will let you down. You have to follow after God. But maybe you can find you a little Ann or Georgia, so to speak, my two finished dogs. If you are not a beginner at, at whatever you're into, Maybe you need to step it up a little bit and be the little Ann or the Georgia, so to speak, in whatever you're doing at work. Show the new guys the right way to live. Show your kids the right way to live. They're looking at you, whether you asked for it or not, when you became a parent, you became a role model to those children. And they're gonna look to you. Whatever decisions you make, that's the decisions they're gonna make most of the time. Whatever you're into, they're gonna be into. You can do the wrong thing and tell them, don't be like me. They're not going to hear that. They're going to go right down the same path you do. It's an awesome responsibility being a parent, but it's also a rewarding deal when you see them making good decisions and they pass that on to their kids. So I challenge you today. What is it that you need to step up on, learn, or be the example for like we're going to try to do today? And be patient with those others that are starting out. I mean, sometimes we go out and... Uh, Whatever we're into, I see it happen at churches sometimes. Someone new comes in. They haven't been a Christian that long. People don't have patience with them, and they ought to have patience. Remember, you don't clean the fish till after you catch it. So we have to be the right example. Show grace and mercy like he's shown us grace and mercy, and remember that no one is perfect. I hope this has been a help. We'll get some more footage off these dogs, hopefully doing something good today. And if I don't get any more footage, Y'all have a great day. I'm going to turn loose some hounds. I'll try to get some footage of that too. But have a good one. All right, All right. the group has been turned loose. And uh, they're going to run around and act uh, funny and goofy for a minute probably, emptying out and doing what normal dogs do. That uh, red dog right there with the white face, that is little lamb. And uh, George is down there uh, coming forward here two solid red dogs. There's some smaller ones that are out here that are out of Happy Girl. Um, I've got some out of Happy Girl. I've got uh, some out of Black Briar. I've got uh, some out of a, a dog named Nikki. None of the ones out of Nikki will be uh, sold, but uh, I've got uh, some of these other ones that we'll be working with and some of them I'll keep, some of them I won't. But here's a typical thing that happens. They take off down the lane like a bunch of wild, crazy Indians. Uh, running all down through there. They're just happy to be out. They've actually been uh, kept up for, oh, probably the last uh, five days or so, letting them rest uh, after they've been in the training pen. So now they're rambunctious and ready to roll. So now I'm gonna have to uh, start calling for them and see if I can get them back because they're gonna keep rolling on down there. Hey, 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 Some of them that are actually coming back, uh, that's good. That's a good sign. The one's on further down there coming on back. So you never know. I mean, I've had some that do and some that don't. So, you know, nothing to get super excited about, but, but it's good that they're coming on back. And I'll have to be looking down at my GPS and, uh, and everything. Some of these dogs have GPS collars on them. Some of them have the, uh, the Garmin Pro Trash Breaker because some of them are so, their necks are so small. The GPS collar probably just fall off. I've actually got one dog out here with that one right there. That female right there has actually got two collars on her because the GPS collar would get not get tight enough 
to do anything, so I put uh, an additional collar on of the uh, Pro Trash Breaker. But this is what you get, a whole lot of whole lot of running around. You gotta be real patient. I'm just kind of sharing with y'all some of the things that, that I go through as a dog trainer. But you have to keep in mind what you're dealing with, and that's what we have to do sometimes is bear in mind what you're dealing with. Uh, sometimes we have higher expectations for people we realize they hadn't been doing something that long and we need to be patient and uh so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna walk over here and uh of course little ann and george will go up in there so i'm just gonna try to get these dogs up in here see if they'll they'll do a little a little uh hunting uh got one big tricolor there that's that's houdini that's a finished dog that's ready to go uh not out of my bloodline but uh other than other than him, we got the two the two older dogs. Little Ann and George are about uh, oh, I'd have to look at their birthdays, but they're at least eight, maybe nine years old. So they're older and uh, very seasoned. But uh, I know these dogs have been running because their ears were totally tore up in the training pen, and um, and so I'm just anxious to get them out here and let them let them look around a little bit. The one bad thing about this field is there's a lot of beggar lice in this field. And you come out and you got a job to pick them, pick them off left and right. Anyhow, we'll see if we get anything going here. Uh, they're, they're over here running a little, you know, or not running, but hunting a little bit. So it's common to have some hanging out like, like these right here, kind of hanging out at my feet a minute. They ain't sure what's going on either because I don't walk around with them in the training pen. Um, I think they need some independence. That's, that's So that's how I train them. Anyhow, just sharing a little insight with you. We'll get some more footage in a minute. There is actually uh, one dog that was already sold in the last batch that I uh, posted that's out here today. And it's being picked up, headed to New York. It's being picked up. It's a blue tick female. And it's being picked up tonight by a dog hauler. And then there's two other ones that are being shown to a guy in Virginia. And both of those are blue ticks. Uh, I think it's a male and a female. But uh, anyhow, uh, other than that, I think there's... I think there's about five young dogs that have uh, have been out before and in the three finished. The rest of them are all green as can be. They're, uh, but they're going to do something, I'm sure. There's a little ant. Get him, girl. Get him, girl. Get him now. Find him. You just try to lead them in the right direction, keep them in the right stuff when they're young, hoping that they'll get on one and then they'll they'll know what you're what you're trying to do. There's a little little male out of Nikki. Come on, find him. That's another male out of Nikki, that dark, dark blue tick. Got some dogs that have opened their mouth over there. It was good to see. Yeah, there go some pups. See if I can figure out. I think they're going toward this lane over here, so I'll go over this way. There's Georgia and Little Ann. there in the purple this purple collar that was barking first that's one of the ones that's being shown or heading out but look at all these young ones get in there get in there go get him uh, 
Oh yeah. I live for this, I ain't lying. This is amazing. You go on. This is two knuckleheads right here that I've been working with. That, and he finally is trying to go. Now we got a roar going on. You can tell in here it's windy today. Be nice to get this rabbit on video with these dogs, but I don't know if it'll happen or not. Probably be my luck to cross up here around the curve. Heading on across, I think. Across this other lane. All right. There he goes, there he goes. The knucklehead scene. But Lord, I can't believe that rabbit's staying out that long. Now let's see what happens here. And I'm gonna hit the track. That's a, that's a young dog that's already being shown or sold. The young dog leading the pack there. Here's some of the new ones. <clears throat> Oh, you gotta love that. Now, some are still behind me, hung up on the track. That's very common. Are they gonna try to catch up? That's one of them. Two knuckleheads in the back. Here goes another little, that's one happy girl. Happy girl dogs. I'm not sure if that's a male or female. Never understand why you have some that take off and some that do this, but it's all part of it. He's going to get to him. He don't know where they're at yet. There's another lane over there, but I can't get through to get to that very easy. There's a pretty good sized ditch. Hopefully they'll come back this way. I'll get some more footage when they get a little closer. It gets a little louder. Got one going. Some other pups. Man, I wish this wind was laying down, <coughs> making it tough. Go get in there.
dog there that had been off a little bit. Just headed to him. That one there is out of uh, Happy Girl. Happy Girl and Awesome. I keep backing up because it sounds like the rabbit you know, is always out in front of the dogs. It sounds like it's possibly going this way, so I'm trying to cover the lane in case it shoots out. And won't, hopefully it won't be behind me. Yeah, they're in a check now. Get some more and they get it going.